Oh man, let's get some more gravy. Oh, yes indeed. Stick around, ladies and gentlemen. We done made some meatball stew. Time to get you a large pot. Heat it up. All right, so we're going to go ahead and lower this to a low heat here. We're going to let that sit as we move over to our prepping area and get slicing and dicing. So what I have here is one green bell pepper, two yellow onions, four cloves of garlic, one bunch of green onions, and two sticks of celery. You already know what comes next. Let's go ahead and get this cleaned up and move it to the fridge. All right, ladies and gentlemen, back over to our large pot. We're going to get started on a roux. So we're going to add two thirds cup of a vegetable oil to this pot. Next, we will add one cup of all purpose flour. And we will begin stirring quickly. All right, so if you have been here before, then you know that it will start out clumpy like this. Do not be alarmed. You just got to keep moving it around. It will thin out, you know, and when it does, then we can kind of increase our heat from there. Now, look, many people have their own way of doing a roux. Some people can do it in the oven. Some people can get it done really fast on the stove. Me personally, I like to go low and slow and maybe gradually increase the heat. For me, I just find it comes out with the best flavor. You know, a quick roux for me sometimes will have a charred taste. So, hey, you do you, like I always say. For now, we're going to take our time. All right, so look, once you kind of see it smoothing out like that as it sits, you know, uh, you can see here, it's, it looks clumpy, but then as it sits, it will smooth out. When it does that, you can go ahead and increase your heat a little bit. And that'll help kind of get things rolling a little quicker here. In that beginning stage, if it's way too hot, man, it can, it can light things up pretty fast. So that's why I like to keep it really low and then gradually add a little bit more heat over time. All right, we are smoothing out quite a bit here. As you can see, it's not nearly as thick as it once was. You know, it's becoming more of a creamy consistency. Also, it's probably a little bit more tan than it was in the beginning. But like I tell you guys, we, you know, we just stay patient with this. We keep moving it around and uh, make sure it doesn't stick to the bottom. Now, look, you know, you can kind of speed up this process if you just, you know, let it sit for a little bit in the middle. Uh, you'll see it kind of bubble up. Now, you have to be cautious when you do this because doing something like this, I mean, you kind of really don't know how high your heat can be. So when you let it sit like this, you may be taking a huge risk at uh, charring it up a little bit. But I know in this case where my heat at right now, my heat is at right now. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so as you can see from here, kind of move it. And there you go. Look, you see that little light, light brown look that's coming through right there. There you go. See, that's not bad. You get that little bit of color right there and you can move it around and bam, you'll start changing the color a little bit quicker. But be careful when you're doing that. If uh, this is one of your first times making a roux, you may want to just keep moving it around until you get to that color that you're looking for. All right, guys. So I have been stirring this for roughly 25 minutes now, and um, I'm about at a peanut butter color, I think you would call it. Now, look, if you are not at this color at 25 minutes, don't be alarmed. You know, you're just going at a little bit of a low and slow pace, which is completely okay, all right? And... and with that being said, if you're beyond this point, hey, bravo to you as long as it doesn't smell like you burned your house down. <laughs> so, uh, you know, like I said to you guys, uh, coming to this process, we're just going to keep at it and let things move along. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a very nice chocolate color here. 
Now look, you could probably go a little darker, you know, depending on the color you want to end up with for your final result. But at this point, I'll add the vegetables in and let them cook down probably 20 minutes in here and they'll get extremely soft. And at the same time, it'll darken this roux even more. So let's go ahead and knock this out. And make sure you scoop all of it in. All right, so we're just gonna blend this all together and that hot roux is gonna saute this down probably a lot quicker than normal. But uh, we do want these vegetables to get extremely soft because you don't really want crunchy vegetables up in your food, unless that's your thing. And if it is, by all means, you know, don't cook them as much. But for me and my family, I gotta cook these bad boys down a lot. So stay tuned. All right, guys, as you can see, this has gotten very soft here as far as the vegetables go. And the roux has darkened, it's very dark. It looks beautiful, it smells amazing. Uh, I've probably been cooking this down for almost 30 minutes now. Um, I, I had kind of lowered my fire just because I didn't want to burn anything. But, it, you know, it may get to this point in 20 minutes. And, you know, it's just going to all depend on how hot your heat is. So, but at this point, we're going to add a little bit of a 32-ounce container of chicken stock. And what we're going to do is, is we're just going to smooth this out with this little bit of stock. There we go. And uh, as you can see, it lightened up a little bit. It will do that when we add the liquid. So here we go. More of the chicken stock. Now, look, you guys may have seen me in the past um, use beef broth. I just find it tastes better with the chicken stock. I'm just not much of a beef broth, beef stock kind of guy. But you can use that. You can use beef broth, beef stock, because, I mean, we are using ground beef to make our meatballs. But... I do find it tastes better with the chicken stock. So we've added in the rest here and we're gonna go ahead and blend this in just to kind of get it smoothed out and we'll go from there. All right, that looks good. So next we're gonna add in four cups of hot water that we have heated up in the microwave. There we go. Just gonna blend that in. All right, now we're gonna add some seasoning. One tablespoon of your favorite Cajun or Creole seasoning. One tablespoon of parsley flakes. One teaspoon of black pepper. One tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire, Worcestershire. <laughs> and two bay leaves. Go ahead and blend that around, all that flavor. All right, we're gonna go ahead and raise our heat and bring this thing to a boil. All right, once you got that boiling, you will cover it up, lower your fire to a simmering heat, and you're gonna let this cook for one hour. Also at this time, preheat your oven at 375 degrees. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to make the meatballs. So right here we have two pounds of ground beef. We're gonna add one half tablespoon of some Cajun or Creole seasoning, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, One tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire, you know, you know. Get it on there. Okay, next we're gonna take two pieces of white bread that we have moistened with a little bit of water. We're gonna break them up into tiny pieces and just add them to the bowl here. And there you go. Okay, next we will add one cup of plain breadcrumbs. You go with plain because you're going to have so much seasoning in here, you don't need seasoned breadcrumbs. Next, we add two eggs. 
and then we will get our hands up in this and mix it really good. And there you go. Time to make some meatballs. Okay, so when it comes to rolling meatballs, it's based on your preference. So what I like to do is, it's kind of compacted here in my hand a little bit back and forth until I get to a point where I feel like it's ready to form into a ball. And then I'll start to roll it into a ball. Just kind of mold it like this and roll it around and, you know, make a little meatball. You know, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Nothing real fancy here, guys. You know, you guys probably know how to make meatballs. But, you know, I'm going ahead and showing you this is what it looks like. So we're going to go ahead and roll these up. And then once we got them all done, we will get them in the oven. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Meatballs. Let's get these bad boys in the oven. There we go. We're going to let those bake for 25 to 30 minutes. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to go ahead and start grabbing these and just putting them into like a strainer, sifter on the side over a plate. So that way I can let some of the excess fat just kind of drip down. You don't necessarily want all this extra fat in your stew. Now look, just to let you guys know, these do brown up on one side here. Um, I mean, they get brown on the outside in general, but if you want them to kind of brown up like this on all sides or majority sides, you can flip them or rotate them as they cook in the oven. So just thought I'd let you know. All right, we're going to go ahead and remove the lid here off our stew. Looking good there. So this time we're going to remove these bay leaves too because we don't really need those anymore. Get them out of here, get them up on the sides, and go ahead and try to grab them. Ooh, there we go. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start adding the meatballs in a little bit at a time here because we drop them all in there too fast. It's, it's going to splash all over the place. So just take your time. All right. There you go. All right, so what we're going to do is, is we're going to let this simmer for another hour uncovered. So that way it can allow this gravy to thicken up a little bit. And then uh, we'll be good to go. Meanwhile, we will get started on cooking some rice. So just so you guys know, when you're simmering uncovered, you want to raise the heat a little bit. It'll be a little bit easier to get that slight boil uncovered. When it's covered, you can go down to a low simmer. But uncovered, you got to raise the heat a little bit so it can kind of roll. Also, be sure to come back and just... Kind of give it a stir because you'll see as you stir like this then you really get a little bit more of an evaporation there and now you just kind of do this to your liking so if you want it to get really thick then you raise it up even more and more water will evaporate but this is just how we're gonna roll for now and as you can see guys that is looking great so this is where you want it to be as far as that simmering rolling little boil here and uh, look, the great thing about doing it this way with the meatball stew is you can kind of get your gravy to where you want as far as consistency. If it starts getting too thick for you, then you just cover it up and then you'll be right where you need to be. If it's still too thin, you just keep doing this. I mean, these meatballs are gonna, just going to get so tender. So just keep rolling at it. Trust me. Yeah. All right, y'all, let's do that run through. Woo! Let's start it off humming. Oh, man. As you guys can see, simmering uncovered for that final hour, thickened up this gravy, and it looks amazing. Smells amazing, too. Now look, if you want yours to be thicker than this, just keep simmering. But I know this much, as it cools, it's gonna thicken up even more. For me, this is perfect. Oh gosh, look at that meatball. Yes, indeed. Well, let's not waste any time, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go ahead and plate up. <laughs> yes, indeed. Whoo, man, this looks so good. Smells good. My whole house has this great aroma right now. 
you guys can see that there. I wanna, wanna, ooh, I wanna fall off the plate. Woo oh, that's risky. But uh, yeah, it looks amazing. I'm so hungry. Um, look, it's a little different from the uh, last one I did a long time ago. I wanted to revamp this one. Obviously, I'm using chicken stock. There's gonna be many of you guys who watch this and say, oh, you gotta use beef broth. You, you, you're cooking with beef. You know, I mean, teach their own. I just find chicken stock tastes better with this than beef, beef broth. You know, that's just my preference. But like I'll always tell you guys, do what works for you. This time I went a little different too. I, you know, I added a little more water and decided to simmer uncovered at the end. So that way you guys can pick your own consistency, your own preference on how thick you like your gravy. Okay? So once again, you will do you, all right? Uh, many of you guys, you're just gonna try like this and you're gonna love it, and I appreciate that. Okay, well, you know what? I'm, I'm talking too much. I need to take a bite of this because my brain is going crazy right now. My ADD is like, Mason, just take a bite of the damn stew. <laughs> All right, let's go, let's go. I'm just gonna get rice and gravy to start off with. Oh, man. It smells so good. It's hot, too. I don't want to burn my mouth. Mmm. Oh man, that is a South Louisiana gravy at its finest. You know, it's, it's peppery from the, the Cajun seasoning and the black pepper, but there's also like this great aroma of flavor in your mouth from the Trinity, you know, the garlic, uh, even the bay leaves add its own unique, you know, uh, flavor to this. Mmm, that is really good. Let's get this meatball right here. Oh, I love meatballs. Get some meatball and rice. Ooh, here you go. Here you go, chef. Oh! Oh! Y'all don't tell my wife. <laughs> Let's go. Mmm. <laughs> I'm hot. Mmm. Oh, man. That meatball is so tender. It literally like falls apart in your mouth. It's amazing how it stays together like this because when it's in your mouth, it just falls apart. Mm. This is really good. If you've never had meatball stew before, give this a try. It, it's definitely gonna bring about a new take on gravy and rice in your household. Well, all right, guys, that is a wrap. We done knocked it out. Meatball stew. Hope you guys enjoy this one. Give it a try, tweak it to your liking. Let me know what you think. Other than that, I got nothing else for you. Thank you all for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Peace!